This video is to introduce myself. I'm a 75-year-old retiree who got divorced, moved to Ukraine in 2007, married in 2009, and has a son, Eddie, born in 2011, and a daughter, Zoriana, born in 2017. The sad story of my life in the United States and my former family is on my website. I'm a book guy. I've written six, published four, and reviewed more than 450 on Amazon. However, after watching videos by millennials, I think this is the medium that will have the most impact. I consider myself a rationalist, a skeptic with a scientific bent. When I was young, that made me something of a liberal. Today, it seems the other way around. Liberals like to mock conservatives as knuckle-draggers who don't believe in evolution. The fact is that evolution is the process of differentiation, and different human populations are different. It's the liberals who don't believe in evolution. The serious books I read on evolutionary psychology convince me that the argument that all people are equal in talent simply has no substance. What I read about paleoclimate and what I observe of demographics and technology convinces me that global warming is way overhyped. While warming is there, it will be overtaken by events long before we cook to death or drown. What I have observed of the world, and know from my reading in three marriages, is that the two sexes evolve to be different and are different. Pretending otherwise has us headed for extinction. What I read about economics convinces me that the promiscuous money creation by central banks is unsustainable. It can only lead to catastrophe. The foundations seem to be shaking as I speak. Now, I consider most of what I read to be expert consensus. Acquaintances from the liberal redoubts of Berkeley, Portland, Washington, D.C. consider them to be no more than my opinions, and frightfully wrong-headed opinions at that and they tag me with a predictable grab bag of liberal slander, calling me a racist, sexist, homophobe, and so on. Now, they don't often rebut the points I make or the authorities I cite. I just blow smoke, and no minds are changed on Facebook, the high church of liberalism. Very few people even follow the arguments, and the people who want to do so have already unfriended me. I move to speak out now because I find some of the millennial generation are beginning to get it. People like Marcus Willinger in Europe and Julian Langness in the United States understand how thoroughly they have been sold out by their elders. The baby boomers squandered their inheritance and robbed their children's generation to enjoy a bountiful life for themselves. They, Generation X and now the millennials, have neither saved for the future nor had children to support them in that future. The most powerful European heads of state don't have children. Their supporters are kind of like that, too. To satisfy the whims of the present, governments, companies, and individuals have all borrowed way beyond their ability ever to repay. They completely ignore Edmund Burke, who said that a society is a partnership not only between those who are living but between those who are living and who are dead and those who are to be born. The present generation of liberals gives no thanks to their predecessors who amassed the patrimony that they're squandering. Instead, they heap curses on their heads for contrived sins of racism, sexism, and so on, and they have no regard for future generations, which they are neither peopling nor passing on their culture. It is the utmost hypocrisy that these very people, who contribute nothing to future generations, stealing their inheritance and killing the culture, most stridently hector the rest of us about preserving the planet. For whom, might I ask? There are a number of millennial bloggers on YouTube that I greatly admire. Blonde in the belly of the beast, roaming millennial, an angry foreigner, just to name three. They're both perceptive and productive. They're also young and attractive. 
Well, I sure can't compete on the basis of youth and beauty. What can I add? I'm a historical witness. What the millennials know only by gut feel and from their reading of history, I lived through. As a member of the silent generation, I grew to adulthood before the crests of television saturation, the sexual revolution, the drug revolution, and cultural Marxism in general. I remember the world back to which these young people look with yearning. I was in the right place at the right time. I was born in Berkeley. I was there for the free speech movement in 1964. I carried a gun for the National Guard at the race riots in Watts and Hunters Point. I spent four years in Vietnam. I was pushed to look for a new job when IBM implemented affirmative action in the late 1970s and promotions were going to everybody else. I was a trustee in private schools when the diversity madness swept over them. I attended a graduate school of education in the early 2000s. I witnessed the craziness that had swept over the campus. I lost three millennial children to cultural Marxism. Not only have they totally renounced me, their father, but they're unsuccessful in their careers and their relationships. There is no possibility they will give me grandchildren. If they did, they wouldn't be like me in any case. I watched, often in disbelief, as sweeping changes took place in our society. Take popular music. Singers in the 1950s, such as Patti Page, Doris Day, the Andrews Sisters, sang songs of true love. They made young people like myself dream that we might find it for ourselves. But even at that time, there was a strong African-American influence in popular music with risque lyrics like Good Golly, Miss Molly. And then the folk song singers of the 1960s brought a strong anti-establishment movement into music. The latter half of the 60s celebrated drugs. Now by that time I was too old to pay close attention to the music, but it seemed to me to go continually downhill with each new act cruder, more exploitive, more exhibitionist than the last. I've been hoping for decades for a return to something romantic. Actually, we see it in dance. The older genres, such as swing and ballroom, are coming back into fashion. And this introduces the old music to a new generation. Unfortunately, I don't see a new generation of songwriters and performers rising th these days. I watched the status of gays in American society change from my infancy when I had gay babysitters. The same with blacks and other minorities. My observation is that Discrimination was never the vast problem it's made out to have been. Some gays were in the closet, some weren't. More gays than straights were unhappy. Same today. We often had gays over to our house without making an issue of it. Black people seem to have been more comfortable with their status in society then than now. The smattering of blacks in our college prep classes were thoroughly accepted, and they belonged to where they were. Nobody was clamoring that there should be any more. It didn't surprise me a bit when the guy who handed me my Phi Beta Kappa key at the University of California was a black professor. Working in Vietnam with the military for four years, I came to appreciate that the insignia on a black officer's shoulder were just as well earned as those on any other officer. All four services had a colorblind test for assigning military specialties and determining advancement. That was a different story for the enlisted men. And again, nobody expressed surprise. The essence of my story is this. The millennial generation has been systematically misinformed. Lied to would not be too strong a term by schools and media. The essence of the lie is that things used to be terrible and liberals have made things better and will continue to do so. No! They were not terrible. They were better than now, and the fixes that they're making are literally killing us. The changes are not intended to increase your good or mine, but to increase the power and wealth of the people imposing them. Thank God you millennials are waking up to this fact. 
I'll use another video to introduce the other story I have to tell about my life in Ukraine and how it compares with life in the United States. The most important message is this. The wealth of a society is in its people, not in money. Human relationships are the foundation of a good society. The society in which I live survived the communists and is rightly skeptical of what's going on in Europe and America. On the basis of my own experience, I tell you why I think they're right. I'm posting this presentation, the text, on my live journal site. Please leave comments here on YouTube or there on live journal. I look forward to hearing from you. This is Graham Seibert signing off from Kiev.